Hello YouTube, and this is Todd Martin back with another <coughs> video. Um, this is going to be going along the lines of Linux, and for my Linux tutorials, I'm going to be using Debian GNU slash Linux. Alright, just a couple things to hit up about Debian. Um, it's a project that its first initial release was started in 1993. It is one of the two like original remaining uh, distributions from that early on. Um, so basically, Linus Trevolds released the kernel, and then like a year or two later, Debian started. Um, Debian is one of the uh, more popular distributions, if not by use, by uh, definitely uh, a lot of operating systems are based on Debian. Um, to get some examples of that, you have Ubuntu which is a Debian-based Linux distribution. Um, Linux Mint, which is, those are two fairly popular ones right now. All right, so what else can we talk about um, Debian? Uh, Debian uses Aptude as its package manager. Now, exactly what is a package manager? It's a way of, uh, Dealing with repositories, repositories that give fast access to software per se. You'll see that's not like an exact definition, but it's pretty close. <clears throat> so I got Debian virtual box here. See if I rem remember my password that I set. Authentication failure. Uh, Debian really likes to use uh, GNOME, especially GNOME 2 or GNOME 2. I like to say GNOME. So I'll go ahead and add that in the notes up here. It uses the 2.0 version over the brand new 3 version that I personally don't care for. So this is a uh, GNOME. It's a fairly simple operating system. Uh, it's a little bit more complex than Ubuntu in many ways mainly because uh, Ubuntu is designed for the brand new Linux user. Um, a lot of what I'm about to show you guys works in any Linux distribution and this is just kind of like um, basic navigation. So the biggest part of any Linux distribution is knowing how to use the terminal which is what we're going to do now. So now we got that done with. Terminal commands. All right, we have CD, which is change directory. Fairly simple. Um, you can either use dir is a directory, ls is list directory. Now here's where it kind of gets tricky among different Linux distributions is whenever it comes to the, should I use directory or list directory to build a list a directory. Um, here we can use list and it lists everything in the directory or we can just use dir. Um, for instance, in a Mac operating system, you can't use dir, but you can use ls for listing the directory. So now let's change the directory. Let's go to desktop. There we go. If we want to change to the root directory, we just put a slash and we can see everything. Keep on pulling that up. All right. Next thing we're going to talk about is nano slash fi, which is uh, used to edit files in the terminal. I personally like to use nano just because it's easier. Um, a lot of more advanced users like to use Vi. I don't because I don't really see the need in making things more complex. So I'm not really going to show you Vi because I don't know how to use it. So we'll go to desktop. List. All right. Now let's check on this uh, server.py here. So to do that, we just go nano server pi, and nano comes on most. Uh, Linux distributions, but as you can see, I can view and edit this file. 
as I need to. Now usually with programming you wouldn't use something like this because it's a little bit harder. And control X to get out. Instead you would use something such as gedit or an actual IDE. Uh, where Nano is going to help a lot is with editing uh, some configuration files and stuff. Hold on a second. Alright, that's not for me. Alright, so let's find something that we might want to edit. So say I want to edit something like this, where I want to change my local host to 1.0.0.2. This is how we would do it. So Nano is mostly used to edit configuration files. Same thing with uh, Vi. Now people do use Vi to program a lot. So this is where really Nano is going to come into play. Now let's talk about Let's talk about running files. It's really, really simple. Usually to run a file, you just go dot slash and then file name dot if it's a configuration file like that. But I here have a server.py. Let's see something. Alright, permission denied. Alright. If I want, if, alright, so I wrote this server.py file, but let's say I want to make it easy, and instead of doing the Python server.py, I just wanted to be able to do the dot slash pi. I wanted to make a, a Linux executable per se. chmod plus x server.py. Now I can do server.py, and it runs. And of course, this has some errors because I was dealing because I was working with it. So, kind of makes a Linux executable. If we want to make a file a Linux executable, we use that. Alright, so during this video I didn't really go over the install because the install is really simple. Uh, what sucks is uh, is putting it on a new computer. It's kind of hard with drivers depending on how old the computer is. The older the computer is, the more likely it's going to be more compatible with a Linux system. The newer a computer is, the less likely because the free and open source guys haven't had time to write drivers for them. So that's just kind of like uh, your basic Linux needs. Um, dot slash comes into play with a lot especially in the server field because I might want to run you know if I got Apache or something like that I might have to you know Apache start or something like that but um, <clears throat> but Linux is really simple whenever you get a hang of it now what I was talking about with GNU alright so I should actually pull the terminal back up back with the terminal we're messing with the kernel especially whenever we're you know running programs and such what you see right here all this is the GNU stuff all these applications are GNU technically so this calculator is something a part of the GNU project so that's just to kind of give you a perspective all right next to show the package manager now every package manager for Linux distributions for the most part is going to be different if you're using a Fedora base Let me get here. I should probably actually separate that out. If you're using a Fedora base, more likely what you're going to be using is Yum. You can also use, uh, I think it's like RPM. Yeah, it should be RPM. It's been a while since I messed with the Fedora base. Uh, Yum is a little bit easier. I suggest using Yum. Uh, Debian uses aptitude. Um, just some examples of what else uses YUM. Uh, if you ever use a uh, CentOS, that uses YUM. 
Arch, which is actually my personal favorite Linux distribution, uses Pac-Man or yeah, Pac-Man. Um, Arch Bang uses Packer and Pac-Man. Um, Ubuntu uses app.git. So let me show you real quick how to use these. All right, to install anything, we're going to need to take sudo's permission. So to do that, we're going to need to, or to take root permission, which the way to do that in Debian and Arch and some other distributions, you just type su. So this gives uh, kind of like root privileges. I'll type in my root password. So now it says root, go to aptitude. And I can simply just do all that. But the easiest way to do it, let me edit out the terminal. So it's been a little while. If you type in a wrong option, it will give you a list of options. Might be a uh... hmm. we get back to that in a second. Now to search the repositories and to install a new package. Type that. Yes, no, no. Well, it's really been a while since I've done this. Should search. So, aptitude, search, the Apache. Huh. Right, it's a little weird. No, I've been messing with this since before boot camp. I don't know why. To search. Alright, there we go. That's where I messed up. I'm used to having to put those slash marks and stuff from using the other distributions, which happens when we mess around with a lot. So, to be able to search the repositories, to be aptitude search. And then name of application to install would be aptitude install application name to update aptitude update I believe right there. And of course, it's having errors because uh, my internet connection here with the military doesn't like doing that. So that's why it's not updating, and that's why I'm getting these errors. It's because my internet connection isn't allowing me to pull from those directories. So that's kind of the, the very basics of everything you need to know to run a 
Linux system or a Debian system once it actually gets installed. Installing a Debian system is really simple, uh, self-explanatory if you use the uh, GUI. I would suggest if you don't know if the hardware is going to work with it to not do the net install. So let me take you here real quick. Debian.org Getting Debian. And you'll want a complete installation image if you're not too sure if your network card will work. And you just pull one from here. Uh, I generally, I generally go uh, CD, DVD images, and you pick uh, your architecture. We'll do AMD 64 for shits and giggles, and of course you got all that. Now you can get other desktop environments such as KDE and LXDE, but generally on stuff like like these right here would have GNOME on them. And also if you don't want to go through and do all that terminal work, they're getting better with file managers. And of course up here you have your basic stuff such as sound, your time and date, system. This is where you're gonna this is where you can do a lot of the GUI work for administration of your system. Um, you can also do this through the uh, command prompt. Of course this has a software center which is always nice. Linux is getting more and more towards the graphical user interface side of things, so you can less depend on the terminal. Um, the terminal just tends to be a little bit quicker if you know what you're doing. And I bet software center isn't loading up because of my internet connection. Uh, Ubuntu has a software center. A bunch of uh, distributions are starting to pick them up now. It's really simple. You just type in the search box what you want or you click categories. You look through, click install. It's like uh, if you ever use the app center, the app store. On a Mac, it's like the same thing. Alright, that's it. Hey. Ciao. Ciao? Yeah. Yeah, sure.